give in. Never, never, never. Auxiliary units and all other men, most important too, other men and women of the village who served the country so well during the war. I also want to welcome you all and my many friends and supporters who have made this occasion possible. A very special thanks to Brian Lewis. I don't know whether Brian is here, I trust he is. Uh, who kindly donated this beautiful stone plaque and um, I expect he's hiding behind the trees up there somewhere and I'd like to express my gratitude to Doug Haight in the uh, old rectory here for permitting us to put this plaque here and he's given us every assistance. Many thanks to Will Ward of CART, Tom Sykes and his helpers for all his work to make the display possible which we have in the reading room here. Uh, we have great support from Port Castle British Legion and Swanage Branch which I greatly appreciate. Although this, although this is a personal tribute I would also like to add my thanks to many members of the Parish Council who have supported me so well. I would invite you all to visit the Village Hall and view the very interesting exhibition uh, which Will Ward has researched and displayed there. Now, I would like to ask uh, Colonel Vaughan Arbuckle to say a few words. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it was after the fall of France in 1940 that the threat of an invasion became a real concern. As a reaction to this threat, the wartime Prime Minister, Winston Churchill, ordered Colonel Colin Gubbins to create a secret network of civilian volunteers to be known as auxiliary units. The role of these units, one of which was established in Langton Matravers was to disrupt the enemy's advance, giving regular troops a chance to reform on a line south of London. Known as auxiliaires, volunteers were selected for their knowledge of the local area and in occupations which allowed them to carry out their secret duties without suspicion. The seven-man unit in Langton Retravers comprised two bakers, Fred White and Charlie Hasem, three quarrymen, Charlie Coleman, Doug Norman and Nelson Burt, a farmer, Headley Lander and Maurice Dallinger, a shopkeeper and farmer. The team was commanded by Sergeant Fred White with Corporal Charlie Coleman as his deputy. The existence of auxiliaries was such a well-guarded secret under the Official Secrets Act that not even families knew of their role. Each man had to swear an oath of secrecy. They were threatened with severe consequences if found to have betrayed that oath. In some cases, this caused huge problems as men were perceived to be shirkers. 
who were doing nothing towards the war effort. Others, unable to explain their absence at night, were accused of nefarious or extramarital activities. <laughs> their children, in particular, suffered as they were bullied and harangued about their dads not being in the army. Be like dad, keep mum, was the highly appropriate motto of the auxiliars. Most took the secret of their true role to their grave, and we shall be hearing of one such case today. Auxiliary units operated from local hideouts, known as operational bases, or OB for short, carefully concealed and camouflaged so as not to attract attention. Auxiliars received their training in the use of weapons, field craft, sabotage, demolition and wireless operation at Coles Hill House, located in the Vale of the White Horse District of Oxfordshire. Men were armed with the Thompson machine gun, known commonly as the Tommy gun, Smith and Wesson revolvers, and the famous Fairbairn Sykes double-edged commando dagger. The Langton Matravers OB was located in a dense private wood, part of the grounds of the Wilderness, a house on the Valley Road owned by Mr Gilbert, a bank clerk. Originally built by men of the Pioneer Corps, the OB was constructed of corrugated iron sheets and brick walls. It had one large room and a kitchen. Entry was via a hatch and steps. OBs were stocked with food and ammunition. The Langton OB is still there, but now partially filled with water. By now, you will be able to appreciate the difficult role of the auxiliary units. Auxiliars were brave men who had volunteered to serve the country in complete secrecy. They were prepared to risk their lives in the face of ridicule from other members of society who thought that they were shirkers. These men were not playing soldiers in woods who did nothing. They were committed, brave men who sacrificed a huge amount. It was not their fault that they were never called to action. In fact, as the risk of invasion receded, many auxiliars joined up and served out the war in the army. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the background. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce Martin, da Martin Dallinger, who was, whose father was a member of the Langton Matravers Auxiliary Unit. Thank you, Ian. Um, as a surviving descendant of an auxiliary unit member, um, I've been asked to recount my memories of the activities of my father during the Second World War. This won't take very long because I knew absolutely nothing about it, even after his death in 2003. Uh, my father had been employed by the Hawker Aircraft Company building the Hurricanes for the early part of the war and the, uh, the hurricane fighters that were so successful in the Battle of Britain, but he was suffering from ill health caused by chemicals used in the doping shops for the treatment of the fuselage and the wings, and it was suggested that he should recuperate somewhere where the sea air would uh, speed his recovery. His aunt and uncle lived at Coles Farm, Langton Travers, so he moved here and he integrated well with, with the village community. Um, 
I wasn't born until 1949, so I knew nothing of the war years, um, but I learnt more as I grew up. And it was about six months after my father's death, I was visited by Sergeant Fred Simpson of the Creech Barrow Unit, and he had to try and convince me that my father had been a member of an auxiliary unit because I didn't know about it at all. Um, he told me some of their activities and at about that time he was making a series of television programs for Channel 4 called The Secret Army. Um, obviously he'd come to try and find out my father and to discuss with him what he'd done during the war but he was just a little too late. Um, at about the same time, I discovered a booklet produced in Langton by Mr. R.J. Savile, our local historian, um, where he, he named the members of the Langton Auxiliary Unit and showed photographs of the interior of the OB bunker. So I watched the Secret Army TV programs with great interest, and I noted that the identifying shield of the unit was a, a little enamel badge in red and blue with numbers 1, 2, 0, 2, 3 beneath the crown. So I, I started a search of my father's possessions and I found in the lapel of his favourite sports jacket the little badge, face downwards, so nobody would see that he was in a secret organisation, but he was proud to wear it. Um, so this convinced me that he had been involved with it, if there was any doubt but it shows just what a secret it was and how closely it was guarded. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, now I would like um, the inviting uh, Anthony Pitt Rivers, Her Majesty Lord Lieutenant Dorset, to unveil the plan. lovely to be here and it's quite a bright breezy day but it's really good to see you all and the mayor's distinguished guests and to be here to unveil this plot. Um, there were innumerable brave men and women uh, during the hostilities of the Second World War and activities of many of them are well recorded and remembered. But the seven brave men we are honouring today were highly trained civilian volunteers and their service to our country remained unknown, even to their families, as we've just been hearing. And during what must have been very difficult and very uncertain times for them and for their unit. Today, over 70 years later, I think it's right that they and the secret work that they did should be remembered now and in the future. <coughs> and it's a great honor for me, as Her Majesty's representative in Dorset, to have been invited to come and unveil your plaque. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> Gentlemen, sorry, was that a bit of a surprise? <laughs> that was very good. <laughs> We're now going to have a short service to dedicate this plaque. There is only one response during the service. That is, after I say the sentence, beginning with, 
they shall grow not old. I'll end that with, we will remember them. Your response at that point is to echo that by saying, we will remember them. After that, there will be a short silence, and then the service will resume. We take a few moments of silence to recollect the presence of God, and his promise that where two or three are gathered together, I am with you. Let us remember before God the sacrifice of those who took upon themselves the burden of secrecy and the scorn of others in order that they might be our last line of defense. Those whom we forgot to remember. Sergeant Fred White. Corporal Charlie Coleman, Private Nelson Burt, Private Morris Dallinger, Private Charlie Hasem, Private Headley Lander, Private Doug Norman. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, for you have put it into the hearts of your servants to offer the gift of this memorial to the Langton Matravers Auxiliary Unit. Remember them, O Lord, in your mercy, and grant that all who shall thereby be reminded of those who are willing to serve this community in secret and danger, may themselves be inspired to serve their community with the self-same spirit of self-sacrifice, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Amen. In the faith of Jesus Christ and to the glory of God, we now dedicate and set aside from profane use this memorial in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In your mercy, O Lord, visit this place and drive far it far from it all the snares of the enemy. Let your holy angels dwell here to preserve this memorial in peace. And may your blessing be upon us evermore. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray as our Saviour has taught us, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them which trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the queen, the commonwealth, and all mankind peace and concord, and to us and all his servants life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the ceremony, but you would be very welcome to come and have a look at the exhibition in the village hall and to have a cup of tea and a sandwich with us. And once again, thank you all very much indeed for giving up your time to coming this morning. Thank you.